Ladies and gentlemen, let's all pay very rapid attention to, I got this one, a very, very, very important update for us in private mentorship. And of course, you heard me over time, I've been talking about the, uh, before we actually enter this bull market, if you can recall many years, um, I think 2022 and 2023, before the bull run, we started it, I told us something that was very, very key. Okay. Uh, I look at, so this is the Bitcoin chart from the beginning. Okay. And what I told us was very simple, but it's very, very important. Okay. So looking at Bitcoin since 2010, 2009 beginning, right, went to several zeros and then we begin to have different cycles in 2012. That's after the year 2012, because of after the, the first cycle of 29 to 2012, and then top of the roof for 2013. Okay. And then we have the top of the roof, the 2015, uh, 2016. Okay. So the, yeah, okay. So the first move, 2011. And then, so 2013, 2012, 2013. Then we have the next 27, 2016, 2017. And then we have the next, of course, this was kind of abortive 2019. So 2020 was not a, it, this is COVID-19 interruption, right? And then, so usually we have a step first move, a return down and break over. So retest for the next major move, okay? And then we have, if I, the kind of stylish dropping down and which people will be calling out a lot of prices as it were. And that we had, and then the same thing in 20, so we have that first drop, so it's usually the first drop. And then you say, oh, this over. And then the market take another move and then top of the roof. So we have series of top of the roof here, top of the roof here, top of the roof here. But this was a challenge. One in the COVID-19. Uh, so when we're actually making a move, and of course, we're supposed to have a first drop. And that was where 2019, 2020, and 2021 bull cycle was a bit different but this is something i noticed i saw a failing power of btc even though may still do big but i saw a failing power of btc when we enter in that um 2021 right market cycle right so what happened is that people were waiting for the top of the roof but we end up having something like double top and then we crash down. We we'll have a very long at this thing. Now, one of the first headache I had, and I share with us that time, was that I said, the way we stay longer at the bottom, and then we dilly dallying, move up, and all of that. I say I'm afraid Bitcoin may have another longer year recycling, not be able to cross above this. That is, it will be failing. This chart will be going. So the top of the roof may not happen again because if you are looking at top of the roof now, you are looking at $200,000 to $300,000. And even if you are looking at hitting to this base, you are looking at $145,000, $144,000, or even to the center, two thirty-four. dollars So you can now see that, oh, Bitcoin should be looking at top of the roof to about $400,000 in this cycle. But this is the challenge it posed. And I saw that Bitcoin was... You know, for the first time, now this cycle, normally it's usually in this channel, maybe just a little drop below. And then, so we have a little drop below here, but others, if you check them back, it's always within the same cycle. So this, at this point, once it crosses below uh, this blue line, uh, this is it blue or green? Now, this last red is like the last point of buying opportunity. All right. So, but the last drop of the cycle 
yeah, because of uh, talk about COVID nineteen. So twenty year twenty twenty, we have an abnormal movement of the market, and then we have a kind of double top. And so now, having that, we now move the market start going down, and for the first time, we because this were weak, this were weak. For the first time, we have the body of the candle out of that region that is creating a different channel entirely. So that was what happened and I was a bit worried because we're supposed to rally back from this point. That was like a psychological level. 20, uh, 24,000 was the basics of rally back up. 24,000, 23,900. And so we broke with a very terrible uh, engulfing candle. This is two week chart, guys. Now, if that was the case, we begin to rig marrow. Of course, we foresaw that Bitcoin could come down to even as low as $5,000, $9,000. But of course, we have a bounce off at about $16,000, $15,000 for Bitcoin. And now we start the rally up for Bitcoin. Now, this is a long time perspective for us to understand. And then, you know, we are an investor. We're not just. Um, uh, gamblers or traders, or uh, sorry, uh, gamblers rather. So uh, trading is just one aspect of what we do, but investment is one of the major things. So, and if you are an investor, you must understand what play out in the market for a longer time perspective. Do you get it? So with that, so we have this. And now remember, I did mention to us that um, in January, 2023, I told us we have entered to the beginning of the bull run. So now this was just a confirmation that now we are bullish entirely. But like the buying started, you know, at 15, 16, 17, and 20,000. So now whatever anyone was doing here was just a buy and buy and buy and not buy and selling. Though you know, some of us who can have time to trade, we can still be doing the buy and selling and all of that. So, but it was more of buy and buy and buy on different tokens and all of that. So now moving up here, and then we have a very nice move, and then we cross this 30,000. And that was a very massive and lovely one. And then until when we now have to come down and have another good discount to 25, 26K. And I think I did mention that time and say, wow, what a good discount. What I will just be doing is just to be buying. And then we we'll have this. So even if anyone who was sleeping from the beginning, uh, so the second buying opportunity was September, October, uh, no, August, September, and last to October. So taking from here, for instance, to this point was 185% or give and take. As an investor, uh, you invested something for one year or two, and you are doing about 180 or 200%. That's a very big investment return. Now, this is where the challenge is now. Remember when we got over here, I did mention something very, very, very important was that I said, we are now ranging in the market, right? Look at the candle properly so you can see and interpret if you understand candle chart. Nana said here, there we come, we're now in much trouble for BTC because I haven't leaped up to 70, almost 74,000. So let's call it 74,000. Having leap up to 74,000, we have a kind of digression breaking down to the market. But one of the lovely things that we got supported. So we're still supported for BTC. And there we have a bounce. And I said, as long as we did not close below this black line, then we are still in order. But when we close below this black line, and you can see that we below this channel, then our next target was at about $52,000 thereabout, $52,040, $45,000, dollars And I talked about even to $46,000, $44,000. Now, but the, the point is this, if we break that, that will amount to, we can even have a chance of returning back to $30,000. So what will you say about that as an investor? The point is this, you probably will want to have sold and then waiting to buy back, or best way is just to sit and watch what's happening in the market. Now, this is the point I'm trying to make. And I said, I was no longer comfortable with the movement of BTC. So that means BTC 
even in this cycle, if we were to move, we probably wouldn't have a means to move more than maybe 80 to 95,000 for Bitcoin. Or highest, 105,000. And then we'll start breaking down. But can we do that? Now, for you to agree that you're going to have that done, we have to move above 74,000 and eventually break this resistance. All right? We need to break this resistance of the previous uh, bear season. Uh, this was the confirmation of the bear market. If you have been in Plan B or apparently private mentorship, remember when I said, except and if Bitcoin is able to break above 48,800. I still remember, you can watch some of the video or write-up we send on our group that we are already bearish. So we start like that selling, you know, in that order. And then once we couldn't break that 48,800, I said, well, this is a total bear market confirmed. And that's what you had here. And you saw the market eventually collapse down to what we have. So a lot of people say, oh, now we are returning back. And imagine when somebody come back. So when we got to $17,000, it's as if that was the bottom. But the next, we rally up very fa fantastically. But unfortunately, uh, we broke down again. And then we rally up. So continue until we have a flat down and have a nice rally, even though we still have a retest to $19,000. Now, so that's what we I am seeing here now. Now, don't say I tell you this. I am seeing Bitcoin struggling all this way. You can imagine this is weekly, this two week candlestick. I can imagine Bitcoin all this way have been ranging between this 74000 to uh, I think about $60,000. However, we broke out of this channel. That was nice enough. And we got engulfed. And then that was from 64000 to about 70, 71000 Now, this is the challenge. I haven't climbed up to this point. You see this candle printed. That was not a good candle. Now, we only have a slight support now. At You remember I told you guys about even when we're moving, we should not break below $67,000. Now, so breaking to $67,000, that means we're invariably coming down to about $63,000 again. So if that continues to happen, and we're getting weakened gradually, then we may be tempted to say we are gradually coming to the end of the cycle. Now, so many factors I will mention to us that so what do I, what am I supposed to do? I was telling new people who are just coming in, there is no need for you to buy Bitcoin and hold. In fact, some coins you can buy and hold now are some of those mem coin low gems, and there is no need to be fanatics about them. It's just for you when you buy and hold and you move very well, you take out your capital and watch. So opportunity of buying from, it cannot go down, but up eventually, it's no longer available. Okay, so it's no longer available. So you have to be careful. And now, now you have to check some of that tokens that you bought that have done very well. You probably want to take some profit because now I only confirm that BTC, we are not end of the, the, the cycle of this bull run when we cross above 74 and of course break this resistance. For crossing above 74, that's not an issue, but there's a resistance over here at about $77,000. So chances are there that even when we break out of this limitation, so chances are there that our end of the cycle for this season may be at 77 or, you know, maybe just a test of $79,500 with a week. And then we start plumbing back. And as if we get supported here, going sideways again, and then eventually we drop. Okay? That's a one scenario. So, so one scenario is that if we break above this, don't, don't be in a haze. We can have a fake out to about $77,000, $79,500. And then when I have that, a fake out up to that and a rejection and then coming down, I will float virtually all my cryptos to USDT. Everything, everything, no one remain, everything. So no, no problem. If you eventually return back, I probably will just want to trade at that point. So I will just empty everything. Now, so the same thing here, um, this is just the support we're having for Bitcoin. And then if we have that broken, 
then we go back to $63,000 again. You have to keep a watch on that. And then we still have this 60,000 at a very nice support. And then getting broken out of that point, come on. So even 52,000 may not be able to hold us. And I will tell us why 52,000 may not be able to hold us. You just find yourself down to about $37,000 and then breaking that. This is a long year support zones. So breaking that, then we are bye-bye to this cycle to go and rest as and wait for another cycle entirely. You get it now? So I'm going to compute some data that will show you, right? So this is 2020 of that. And so I'm going to compute some data to show you and some other confluences that makes me get worried about the market as it were. All right, so let's go quickly. And so let me look at my stochastic RSI. So my stochastic RSI, this is the challenge to have checked on stochastic RSI. It has a lot of interpretation. If you look at, uh, this is the normal RSI as it were. Yeah, so we have the RSI already uh, point out, right? So already, you know, create out. So you perhaps may say, okay, maybe we'll have something like this, but that was not the narrative. Now, one of the things is that what people get so much excited about could be a problem waiting ahead of us to my first okay how do i mean now when the market was so abnormal in its movement okay was so crazy the movement was so crazy so unlike this you know all like this we have this movement we have a touch rejected touch rejected and eventually breakout and then we have it massively up so this we have two of it right so after this we rally so we're supposed to rally and then crossover, then we can continue. So now, what am I going to be waiting for? See what I'm waiting for here now. Now, if the RSI could return and eventually break above this 70 or 80 region, right? So if you can break above that 80 region, then I want to see something very nice, okay? Then I will see... The R, this stochastic RSI to cross, okay? The stochastic RSI is to cross this above. Then we can have just like going to that 95 to $105,000. Without that, the more distance this guy start keeping and this guy rejected from here, well, that may be the end of this cycle uh, and we are tentatively going towards a beer market. Another thing I've checked in this stochastic is that it first move to cross and come down and second move uh, before recording. So you can see different years of cycle. These are cycles. These are cycles. These are cycles. And this is happening. Of course, this getting weaker too. Now, so if that happens, then we have to be very careful of what we do in the market. So tentatively, the market is not too healthy. I must tell you, it's not too healthy. I can tell you for free, it's not too healthy. Now, other factors that you have to check, okay? So I go to other charts, for instance, my daily chart, okay? Let's go to my daily chart. You know, I told you guys, so this is my daily chart. Now, let me show you something. On my daily chart, there was a flat pattern of the um there was a flat pattern of the call this guy for me. There was a flat pattern for um the MACD. So now just like we have what we call um uh various divergence, why MACD was going down, this guy was going up, and of course that's why we have this massive drop eventually. Now, you can see my black line on daily time frame. And I told us that we need to stay level-headed above 67,000 plus. If not, it's going to be very disastrous. And so if that is the case, you can see that closing below, this is daily time frame, closing below $67,000, right? That's going to go massively back to 64, 63 region. So we have to get bounced from 63, 64 region. If not, 
Then our journey back to 58, now 56, and then eventually to the 52 we talked about. For me, market is not too healthy. Now, other variables I want to use, so even gold, like I told you about gold, So even gold, like I've said, so this is the first support breaking below this point. Um, so we're gonna have gold. So like you have this, we're gonna have gold flash down to about two thousand two hundred and twenty-two. Now that's just by the way, but you want to pay attention, especially those of you trade the currency, uh, forest, and all of that. You want to look at it or what's going to be happening. So now, so the market is not too healthy. Now let's look at another factor. Okay, so let me show you another factor that make me to say we have to be a little bit cautious. Then about 30 something tokens, we go to DeFi Llama. Now you see some tokens have what we call coin locks. So now all of these tokens, you know, Voyagers too are going to be released. I will check. Now coin locks, look at some tokens that are going to be unlocking this one in the next eight hours. So if I'm holding this token, what should I do? I have to be stay cautious. Because you can see the volumes that will be unlocked about 1.33 million of the token that will be worth about how much? Okay, just a $22,000. But when it's unlocked, what do you think will happen? If it's be unlocked, what do you think will happen? In the next, that is today. Uh, today is, uh, okay, no, tomorrow on the 12th. Today, this one is gonna be unlocked. Tomorrow, Aptos. So if I'm holding Aptos, I just need to respect myself and stay aside. Because if $95 million worth of Aptos are going to be released to the market, you know, those ones that were locked, what do you think will happen? So that means there will be a lot of sell-off and people want to take profit. And so, so if you look at Aptos, let's quickly look at Aptos. Okay, so let's look quickly at Aptos. APT, where is it? Okay. So, Aptos APT. I think so. So look at Aptos. So Aptos will dump more. Ordinarily was supposed to be buying, but sometimes when you would check some technical stuff, there is a need for you to understand some fundamentals around the token. So that means Aptos is currently at $7 plus. Chances are there that it can come down to $4. Yeah, you heard me right. Chances are there that it can come down to $4. Now, but don't rule it out that there were some persons who bought Aptos at the top here <laughs> in March at $18 with the hope that they're going to be making a lot. Now, but Aptos may not, may not, so not a certainty, but being released of how many volume of Aptos, so what do you expect to happen to the market? So we have tranches, some of those, so you can check all of those tokens and see so in the next one day, we have massive, this is, okay, 133,000. This is uh, 59,000, okay? This is 470-something thousand. Uxo, Cyber Connect, 7.1 million, 600 and something, Perpetual Protocol, 90 million for Arbitrum. So if you are holding Arbitrum, you have to be very careful. In the next four days plus, now Ab 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 Arbitrum is going to be releasing volumes of that come on that's crazy right now that's about 10 billion arbitrum okay ape coin eight point something million so all of these all of these are in the next one week from now to next one if you calculate how much we're going to be released to the market zeta right this is come on this is crazy 603 million okay so daily unlock and then all of this. So this is going to be released in that order. So you can see that there's so much volumes of tokens 
right, to be released. Yeah. So if I'm holding all of those coins, even optimism, okay, that's still taking some days, 18 days. So you have to check all of these tokens. Actually, the the YDX, okay, the YDX, 15 million, okay. Immutable X, okay, 25 days. Immutable X, Avalanche, in the next 50, 43, some something days. So I want to check and be a bit careful because, okay, this one is still far, 219 days. So that is not uh, current, uh, recent. Uh, so still have a long, so, okay. Uh, they're starting to unlock on Solana. Are you serious? Okay, so that may not be a fear for you. Can you see what I'm doing now, <laughs> guys? So you can see what we're talking about. So that's one of the events too that may contribute negatively to the price of Bitcoin uh, <clears throat> coming down, like I've said. Okay? So you have to be very careful anyway. So you don't want to just buy yeah, Bitcoin and hold. <clears throat> okay? So uh, you saw the support. You know, we said Bitcoin was going to go to um, 70,000. It went to 71,000 eventually. Then we had all this and then got rejected again. So we've never had. So logically, we have been coming down and all of that. Now we break this point. So breaking this point is going to be. So breaking 63, 64,000. Yeah, fine. You can see we have 60,000. As a support level, uh, so looking at it this way, uh, let me just take the week, take the week, okay. So you're looking at about 59,000, 60,000 as the like, <clears throat> guys. So we have to be very careful. For me, I'm a little bit um, worried, all right? So if you are new and you are buying into any of the token, let it be just buy and sell, not buy to hold. So understand that, buy and sell and not buy to hold. And then once we see all this point broken, uh, then I can off offload. Then if I see break above and didn't come across a break above um, 64 and then uh, 74, 77, so 77, 79, 5, it can be a kind of uh, fake out and then drop. So logically, logically, what was in the market is may not be too healthy. So understand what I'm trying to pass across. Now, for those of you who are new, please pay attention because we're going to be doing um, a lot of signals and all of that. So what you want to pay attention to is very simple. Just like when I did experiment here, okay? <laughs> so you can imagine, I think it was me and my wife and then when I was telling her to trade on these for the qualifications of uh, the airdrop. And now, if you look at this token, I use it and I... So I expected that the market was... So this is the thing you need to pay attention to. Now, this is Pepe, right? So Pepe, I, I traded... I used Pepe to trade. So let's look at it. Let me go to one hour time frame. So I, I enter Pepe and I expected that Pepe should get to that region. But nevertheless, when the market was moving up, I had to... Yeah, I had to, as a matter of fact, I had to, um, I had to adjust my stop loss. Okay, so understand that. I have to adjust my stop loss. So Pepe, and I told, and so we entered um, <clears throat> Solana, and I told her to take profit at one sixty three, and it's you know because we took profit at Bitcoin at sixty nine eight fifty. I say go to seventy thousand, but take profit at that. And so you said, ah, that was too fast. <laughs> yeah. So you said, ah, that was too fast for for uh for the, what's it called? For the Solana, you see, you see, now have to adjust it to one uh, 165. And now, of course, it didn't get back there again. So for Pepe, so you can see that for Pepe, I expected this region, right? 
And then what happened? So you can see my diagonal so, uh, trend line. And then it got rejected too early there. And I knew that that was his sell. This is one hour. So I have to go to a lower time frame. So one hour should be five minute equivalent. So four hours should be 15 minutes uh, lower time frame entry, right? I will teach you guys some things about all of those what we call time frame synchronization. You're an investor, so you don't pay so much attention to too much English. Yours is that you are able to get confirmation of one or two of these, and then you are taking action. So you can see BTC. So if I go to Pepe, <clears throat> so BTC is dumping. Um, I was no longer comfortable. So, so look at this is Pepe. So if I go to Pepe, let's look at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, that was lovely for Pepe. You know, after we confirmed that region and it got rejected here, that will have given me a very nice sell and then sell down and then take some profits as it were. Do you understand? So now having confirmed the strength of activities over there, and then this is 15 minute time frame. So I go down to five minutes. <clears throat> that will give me multiple entries as it were. So, but shutting it down, I haven't seen on the one hour time frame. So that means I will have shorted from here or at least here. And then the market continue down. At this point, it's just for me to move my stop loss. Because that's already dropped below 200 moving average. I moved my stop loss. So eventually, it's already bottom out here. You definitely want to exit. Perhaps you probably want to be in a buy. Having bottom out to a buy. Wow, that was lovely. And that will have been a massive, so like those one I did was 75, 85% digest yesterday. So entry from here, for instance, let's look at it. And I remember I used 20X. So this is about 10% drop. So 20X, that will be 200%. 10X, that will be 100%, right? All right, because I've seen it here uh, on my one hour time frame. Yeah, so all this English we're speaking here and there was here. <laughs> yeah, 131. So I actually stopped at 129. So look at it. All the big English we're speaking. Can you see now? <laughs> so you will have made money. So what is important is that you find an entry, an exit, and be in profit rather than trying to debate what's going to happen in the market or show to people. Now, if you look at it now, this market was supposed to be going up but got rejected there. So what should I do? I just like, okay, look at it. Let me just do small of it here. So let me go to that same guy. Okay. So this is Pepe. Pepe. Now, this is just a random entry, so which is not normal. Okay. Pepe is actually... Um, let's go. He's actually proving stubborn to go more. So you can see that this is a support line and he's still holding on that support line. But it's fragile because the whole market is not healthy. So out there, Pepe, to want to like prove some point. But let's let's do something. Um, so let's do something. So I go to Pepe, just do small shot, right? 20X, Pepe, yeah. So 20%, uh, 50%. I thought I've checked all of those isolated. Yes, correct. So, uh, yeah, so they're here. So I'm shorting Pepe. Okay. So I'm in negative. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Almost profit negative. So now let's look at it. Ordinary Pepe is supposed to be going up. So me shorting it was not normal anyway, but just for experiment. Now, because you're going to be doing all of those things over time. So let's look at it. Uh, going back to Pepe here. Okay, so same pepper. 
Okay, you can see now I'm going to be negative, okay? We're going to be negative. So I just want to look at Pepe and then set my take profit. So I'm going to be negative by now. Aha, you can see I'm in negative. So 1.12, okay, 1.12530, okay, 1.14117, 1.14117, 1.14, am I correct? 117. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they are platform. They don't even show you the range of the, your take profit and all of that. Okay, so I'm going to put my stop loss at 1.12. 1 1.12. 1 1.2058. Uh, stop loss. No, okay. <clears throat> okay, so stop loss. I see one point two. One point two zero. Is it five four? I call it. I don't know. Ah, that's too bogus. Okay, so never mind. So I'm going to monitor it. So, so but ordinarily, when you are doing that, so sometimes so you can see that it's bullish and we're, we're a negative of 3 4% already and all the like. So let's look at it in the market. Can you see now? So the support line is holding, but it can get rejected again at one. So at that up there. So you can see now. So you can see we have very, very big negative nine percent. So I'm looking at it getting rejected at one point one nine or one point two. So if you get rejected there, I will short more. So but there's buy volumes are more, right? But that could be so if I go to channel, you know, but this is a smaller time frame anyway. Okay, so side I will get rejected here and then dump that, then now continuation for downward move, okay. So market generally not healthy and so let's see what Pepe will survive and all of that. So, but if you are in on time, that will have given me a here, a sniper entry to a right up here and then so, but volume is adding up to market and then here volume lost and all the like, okay. So tentatively, I'm in loss, so no problem. I'm not bothered about that. And so I just continue doing what I'm doing. So please, everybody, pay attention. Like I said, I'm a bit worried for the cycle we are down. It may not be too healthy. and So don't take it for granted. Don't take it lightly. I'm not saying, so somebody will ask me now, what am I supposed to be doing? Watch all of those symbols or signals or those um, signs I give to us, okay? Well, number one, I'm supposed to be doing is now go back to those coins that you're already in profit with. All right, those coins you're already in profit with can sell part of it into USDT. Okay, now then those coins I did mention, right? Those coins I did mention on those coins I did mention on uh, what's it called? Those coins I did mention on, uh, call it for me, that they were going to be doing, uh, Pepe is actually against BTC. Yeah, because extremely bullish uh, for a short time now. 
So you can see Pepe, but I'm seeing some rejection eventually. But if it's not rejected here, then that's going to be parabolic. That was, that's crazy, right, guys? It's already pumping crazily. Now we're going to be in crazy negative. 22% negative. $2 lost. So when you come and you actually, these were like multiple weeks, and the market was running up. Now, man, so the moment it crosses here, there's going to be parabolic. Wow, wow. So this is massive. So I'll give us the update on it thereafter. So, but I don't want this video to be too long. And that's why I need to shut it down. So please pay attention. It's very important. So what am I supposed to be doing? I've told you, you have to check. Uh, once BTC cross below 67,000, then you can see it. We're waiting for our 63, 64. Breaking below that, then that 52, 59,000. Um, 59,000 is the support line, last support line, 59,000. So not stopping there. You have a little stoppage at 58, a little stoppage at 56. But do I wait up to this point? No, I don't need to wait up to those points. So let's be careful. Right, so stay safe and let's move the market. What am I supposed to be doing? I buy any market, it's in profit. I take my profit and wait again, okay? That's what you're supposed to be doing. So not trying to, um, I want to accumulate coin. Uh, I can tell you time of accumulation has passed. 